I posted a video about what to pack for basic training and if you haven't seen it I'll link it for you guys up here in the card section but basically what I want you guys to understand is that when you're packing for basic training forget the fact that you're gonna be there for two months and just pack as if you're spending one night in a hotel because you are after you spend that one night in the hotel, you're going to go to basic training where they issue you every single thing that you need. And if there's anything that you didn't pack that you want, they're going to let you buy it at a store. So literally, pack for the one night. Now when it comes to AIT, I told you guys in the last video that you should pack your AIT bag and then leave it at home with your family. And then when your family comes to visit you at your basic training graduation, they can drop off that bag. Some of you guys are going to go to AIT for three months, six months, all the way up to a year. But when you're packing for AIT, just imagine that you're going on a week-long vacation and you want to pack just enough to be comfortable, but not enough to make yourself at home. If I were you, the first thing that I would pack would be important documents. So your driver's license, your passport, your social security card, your birth certificate. And the reason why I packed those things for AIT is because I didn't know where I was going to go. And I'm glad I did because my first duty station ended up being Germany. I didn't find that out until it was time for me to graduate from AIT. And then because we happened to be in the middle of a pandemic by the time I graduated AIT, I didn't get a chance to go home. So lucky for me, I already had all that stuff. So when I got to Germany, it didn't hold me back. Will you need these things in AIT? No, you won't. But you probably will need them at your first duty station. And it's better for you to already have them and know where they are now than to have to depend on your parents to give them to you later. When it comes to electronics, I would say pack one to two small electronics like your iPad, your Apple Watch, your Switch, something that's going to keep you entertained but not take up a whole lot of space. Laptops are okay too, but I've seen a lot of people either bring their Xbox or try to buy an Xbox in a TV once they get to AIT, and it's just not a good idea. Understand that when you get to AIT, you're your space is going to be limited to probably just one closet and that one closet has to fit all of your army stuff and all of your personal stuff and drill sergeants don't let you just have your tv and your gaming systems hooked up and out in the open all day they tell you straight up if you're not using it it needs to be secured in your locker or in your closet that's why i say keep the electronics to a minimum because you won't even have space to store it when you get to ait when it comes to clothes, most schools are going to view wearing civilians as a privilege that you have to earn throughout your cycle in AIT. So I would say limit yourself to about a week's worth of clothes. And I would say half of it should be like gym attire, like just going outside hanging out attire. And the other half could be like going to the mall clothes. Eventually, you're going to get your privileges and you're going to be able to go off post and hang out and wear civilians. But it doesn't happen immediately. You do have to wait until you phase up and get those privileges but for the majority of your time in AIT you're gonna be wearing your army uniform so honestly don't worry about packing too much clothes if you wear contacts bring your contacts we weren't allowed to wear them in basic training but nobody cares in AIT and that to me was a luxury when it comes to personal hygiene items I would say pack as much as you want especially if you feel like the stuff that you use isn't found in most stores so if you have a body wash that you absolutely love but it's not sold everywhere or you have a face cream or you have a hair gel that only works for your hair type or your skin type, go ahead and bring that stuff. Bring as much of it as you can to last you however long you're going to be there. That kind of stuff just doesn't take up much space and it's not going to hurt you to have it. On to what not to bring. So don't bring your vape to AIT. I know when I went to school, they weren't allowed and I know that a lot of AITs don't allow them. They do allow you to smoke cigarettes in authorized smoking areas, but vapes, strictly forbidden. So don't bring them. When you're packing, don't bring a suitcase. Bring a duffel bag or something that you can fold up and tuck away easily. Don't bring any medications because anything you need can be prescribed to you from the clinic. Don't bring anything that's super expensive or super valuable because you're going to be in a shared room situation. When I was in AIT, there was three people to a room and they told us all the time that stuff goes missing. And when it does, it's nobody's responsibility or nobody's fault but your own. To all the girls out there, you do not need to bring your purses, your wigs, your makeup, none of that lavish stuff because at the end of the day, it's just AIT. When you get to your next duty station, you can go back to being the baddie that you were before you joined the army, but it's just not worth it in AIT. Bringing your own sheets and blankets is something that I see all the time, but it is completely unnecessary. Some schools don't even allow you to use anything other than the army issued bedding. My company did let us use our own sheets and pillows because of COVID, but we just bought them when we got there. The most important thing, like I said, is pack like you're going on a small vacation, but do not make yourself at home in AIT. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Also, if you guys have any video suggestions for me, let me know in the comment section. And I'll be happy to make those for you guys.